Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a full fingerstyle arrangement of Johnny Mitchell's River, a beautiful song, a true classic. I'm gonna play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick, note by note, chord by chord, with tabs right here on the screen. Goes like this, enjoy. Okay, so the intro to this song is kind of a sad twist on Jingle Bells. So the melody you play is this. Okay, it's the open E string six times. Then zero three. And then one on the second string. Okay, so the one on the second string is inside all three chords you use to accompany the melody. C, A minor and F major 7. Okay, F major 7 is F without the one on the E string. It's an open E string. So you get 0, 1, 2, 3 on strings 1, 2, 4. So you have this C note, the one on the second string inside all three chords, as well as the open E string. So the only note that's not in the chord is the high G note. Uh, even though you have a G note inside a C chord, but let's not get technical about it. So you play C and then you continue playing the melody. Okay. And you can harmonize with strings two and three all the way. Even though this gets old really fast, so just try to uh, create a dynamic. Try to uh, harmonize every second or third note. Okay? Immediately creates an interesting sound. Okay? Even this works. And whenever you have a space, you can play the fifth string or the fourth. See? And this creates a kind of a back and forth feel. So just do whatever feels right. You can just play the chord once. And then again, and this is a different feel. So it's really up to you how you want to interpret this. And then you do the same thing with A minor, but you play three on the second string before you do it. See? Same thing. And then three on the second string, and then the same thing with F major seven. Okay? So C. F major 7, and remember it's a sad song, so try to play it 
real soft. And then you have G. So it's three on the second string again. And then you have three, one, zero, zero, all on the second string. And then two, zero on the third. So you can arpeggiate the chord in between. And again, whenever you have space, fill it in with chord notes or a bass note. And that's your intro, C. Three again, and then G. Okay, three, one, zero, zero, and then two, zero on the third. All previous notes on the second string. Then you have the verse. Now, the verse starts with F and C three times. So again, it's really up to you how you want to interpret this. The melody is it's uh, one 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 zero zero on the E string, ones being F and zeros being C. Okay, now you can play around with this. You don't have to stick to the lyrics verbatim. So you can really just uh, create an interesting feel around that. See, you can just hint at it. You can play one zero with F and C and then just arpeggiate the chord or create an interesting rhythm in between. Okay, you can variate between the different choices uh, every time you play it and you have three F and C couplets so you have a lot of space to, uh, to maneuver and to try different things. And then you have C, okay? It's three, three, three slide to five on the E string. And then one on the second string. So it's C with C, uh, with a G chord, uh, with a G note, okay? And on the C chord, the three, three. And then you slide, then go back to the chord and play one on the second string. And I recommend playing the chord again because when you slide, you let go of the chord, so... Okay? And you still have a note ringing there, the open G string. See? Still ringing. So you can play it right before you slide. It's a small trick, just a neat trick to keep a note going instead of just having the chord stop abruptly. Um, then... Then you have A minor and okay, okay, go. And then you have okay, it's A minor. It's strings three two three two three two. Okay, I wish I had a river. Okay, so okay, just two one two one two one on strings three two three two three two, and then three on the second string. And you play the bass note, the first beat of the bar, uh, with the first second string. So this is kind of a precursor to it. So, okay. And then you have okay, an arpeggio of A minor, strings 5, 3, 2. Then the open E string, then 3 on the second string, leading you back to G. So three, one pull off to zero. It's the same notes from the intro. Three, one, zero on the second string. Okay, but this time a pull off. Then the open third string. So no two on the third string this time. Um, so again. Okay, A minor. The whole arpeggio. Then three on the second string leading back to G. I say back to G because we played it in the intro. It uh, didn't make an appearance in the verse yet. Semantics. Um, that's it with the verse. So F, C. Three times. 
Try to vary between the three uh, iterations and then C. Then you can do one zero on the second spring inside G for a G sus. Okay, like this. And then you play the verse again, and then after this you play the chorus. The chorus starts with a barred F to a barred G or a fingerstyle F to a fingerstyle G, which means one, two, three on strings uh, two, three, four, and the thumb on one on the sixth string. Two frets up leads you to G, okay? And this uh, frees up the pinky to do, okay, the melody on the next uh, bar. So you start with F and it's kind of like the, the A minor line, but a little bit different, okay? Instead of strings uh, three, two, three, two, you have two, three, two, three. So it's um, one on the second string and then two, three, two, three, two, Three. Then it's three on the second string and then G. So you can go to G when you have the first uh, D note there, the first three, like this. You can take the whole chord there. Um, if you're barring, it's the same thing. Right? Same thing. Um, then Five pull off to three on the second string, five on the third string, and then three on the second string. Now it's easier to do if you do it like this, because you have the pinky free already. If you're barring, just make sure you're not playing the D string because that would create a G7 and you don't have a G7 in this song. Okay, if you play, you get a seven chord. That's not the harmony there, it's too dirty, so... Okay? Just be careful. If you do it like this... It's actually easier. It looks more complex because you're using the thumb and all, but it makes it easier once you get uh, used to using this shape because you have a free finger to solo it. And then... You play the bass first, or and just an arpeggio, a simple arpeggio, then you have 3-3 three, three on the E string, 3-1 on the 2nd string. And of course you can harmonize with the rest of the chord. Okay? Then you have this. Okay? What was that? Um, so. It's a C-shaped bar. You bar on five and put a C-shaped chord. This is F. You play the eight on the fifth string, okay? or, uh, or an arpeggio if you like. You don't really have much space to do. Uh, to do an arpeggio, a full-fledged arpeggio. So just the bass and then the chord works. Then you play the whole chord. Okay? Then you take the pinky to eight on the second string. Then it's 5-8 on the E string, so the pinky again. Now the F bass note goes away, but the rest of the chord rings. The cool thing about this is that you can play 5 on the 5th string because that's your next bass note. Okay, you can actually play the 5 on the 5th string with 5 on the E string. Okay? Because this is a D, and this creates D minor 7, okay? and the next uh, chord is D minor. So you're actually playing the chord just a little bit earlier. That's it. And then 10, 10, 10, 0 on strings 1 to 4. And then you can either play a solo, 12, pull off to 10, 8 on the E string, or keep the bar. Then arpeggiate, then 12 pull off to 10 on the E string, 13 on the second. Okay, and um, okay, if you want to vibrate, um, you can vibrate here or 
vibrate here and just let go of the chord or vibrate with the chord even though it's a little bit uncomfortable because it's uh it's in the high fret um then you have okay, this it's uh c again it's one on the second string then the bass note with the open e string then three three slide to five and you uh, you don't have to return to C because then you play G so you just put your finger on three on the sixth string and go and then mm, this so um, G and then okay, the open third string you can harmonize with the fourth then Zero, 03 on the second then you put F again and use th use your pinky for three uh, three one on the second string or you can do it like this again the finger style shape enables you to use the pinky freely instead of moving it around inside the chord so again it's your choice so again C Second string on F, and then I made my baby cry. I don't sing as high as uh, Johnny Mitchell does. So, and now you need the pinky on eight on the E string. So you can't really put the full uh, barred F chord here, the C shape F. Um, so you just put a C shape, no bar. C shape from six to eight, six, seven, eight, and you just play strings one, two, and five. Okay, or if you will, um, if you like, you can play the fourth string as well. Just make sure you're not playing the open third string. Okay. Now you don't have to play the fourth. You can play the second string. That's enough. Okay. And then seven five three on the E string, and then C with three one zero on the E string. So it was. Eared among you uh, have heard that I played the open third string. Okay, this creates a, an F add nine. It's not a mistake. It's not a wrong note. It's actually a pretty pleasant note. Okay, so it adds to the atmosphere actually. Um, then, then you have this. Okay, the interlude. The piano interlude that comes uh, around after the, the chorus. So let's play the whole chorus. F, G, C, F, D minor, um, and then C again. G, F, then the high F. Five, five, five on strings one to three, and the open fifth string, and you uh, add eight to it on the E string. So this, um, the eight is the A's third note. It's a C note, and then twelve by itself. Then ten, uh, yeah, ten, eight, nine strings one, two, and three with the A string again. Okay, this is A seven sus four. Okay, fancy name pretty simple chord to put on so okay. and then you have a G sequence a G pedal note so okay. it's kind of a stretch it's uh, three on the sixth string of course with seven seven on the E string then three three and then five five three three so it's um, You fill in the spaces any way you feel like. Then you can do the one zero on the second string or not. Then go back to um, the verse, not the chorus. 
then you go back to the verse and the chorus if you like to play them again. If not, you stay on G and you, uh, you play the ending uh, sequence there, which continues this. It's the open uh, second string three times. Then 0, 5, 3 on the E string. Then 5, 7, 1. So you need to change your finger in here. And then 3, 5 on the E string. So again, second string. 0, 5, 3, 5, 7, 1, 3, 5. It's, again, it's another twist on Jingle Bells, this time kind of a seventh chord twist, um, because you have the seventh, um, G7. <clears throat> so, yeah, Johnny Mitchell is a genius, uh, no doubt about it. And this is really a really beautiful song and kind of ties everything together because you started with a sad version of uh, Jingle Bells and you finish with an ironic version of Jingle Bells. So uh, it's actually pretty smart. Now, a more comfortable way to play this would be with the thumb. So. If you're used to it. If not, it's a good way to practice the, um, the thumb bass usage, the finger style thumb. Um, and that's River. So before you go practice this, download the tab from the website. The link is below in the description. And before you do that, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons. Check the playlists. I've arranged everything to uh, level and uh, difficulty. And again, go download the tab. Everything is for free on Lick and Riff, uh, including subscription, subscribe, and uh, the tab also, the lessons, everything. But if you want to give something back, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. You can't miss it. Uh, and everything goes right back to Lick and Riff to making the lessons for your guitar education. I'll see you the next lesson. Bye for now. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy.